Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this Florsheim Yuma Shell Cordovan. I may say, what's wrong with it? It seems to be in fairly good shape for a 40 plus year old shoe. This is a um, this is a small foot. This is a size seven, I believe, double E. Let me see, seven E. And the customer's complaining that it's a little bit too big on him, so we're gonna resize it for him. We're gonna basically take the rear of the shoe apart. We're gonna make it a little smaller. We're gonna resole it and um, clean it up, condition it, so it'll fit better for the customer's foot. Now, this is not a easy task to do because you've gotta take into consideration the distance from here to the back, where it's too small, you're not gonna be able to slide the foot in anymore. Um, but he's got plenty of room in the back here, so with him it should be okay. Making a shoehorn, this foot should slide right in. Um, this is a rapid blake construction. It's not a Goodyear welted shoe, which means that you've got a midsole that's blake stitched, stitched from the inside of the shoe, and then the outsole comes on. It's stitched like a Goodyear welt sole shoe. So the end result makes it look like it's a Goodyear welted shoe, but it's not. Most of the moccasins, this is a moccasin style. You've got the uppers, they, they go underneath the foot and come back on the other side. It's one piece and the toe stitched on. So I think once it gets done, I think it'll look, well, it'll look still a little look new with new soles and new heels. And um, and the um, uppers cleaned up, so hopefully it'll last for many years to come. All right, let's get started. I'm going to salvage these heels. They got floor shimes on them. No, they don't make those anymore, so. <clears throat> these are very cool shoes. Get some long ass nails in here. Jeez. That's your midsole construction, and it's Blake stitched. Rather, rather simple construction. Now, some people either love these shoes or some people hate these shoes. You know, it's a classic, classic loafer, I think, right? But they're becoming pretty scarce, especially shell cordovan in good condition. You know, so people are people are buying these. You know, if they find them. All right, let's continue. The trick is with this when you're when you're resizing this, you've got to resize the back binding also, and then the back binding goes literally all the way to the front toe stitching there. We're gonna put a splice in the back. Just remove the axis that we're. We're going to take out and then resize the binding along with it. Oh, 
Now these have two stitches here. Let me show you guys. One stitch there and one stitch right there. So the way it's done is that this binding comes down here, it gets stitched and folded in and then stitched the inside piece. This The inside piece is a little longer than the outside piece. I don't know why they do that. It's a mystery to me too. So we got two stitches to take out. This we're going to salvage because this is structural, gives it support back of the heel so it doesn't stretch out of shape. All right, let's continue. This is the heel, <clears throat> excuse me. This is the heel counter here. Adds a little bit of stiffener in the back. Now, this stitch here is done with a machine. It's a zigzag machine, which I don't have. Now, I'm gonna take that apart. I'm gonna hand stitch it. These are my machines here. <laughs> there we go. These are my two machines here. So we'll cut that open. We'll cut the piece out and then we'll restitch it together and we'll start reassembling everything. All right, let's continue. So at this stage, we need to hand stitch this back together to form the back of the heel there. So what I do is I remove the thread from the needle and I go ahead and stitch it and just punch the holes so it's easier for the needle to go through when I'm hand stitching it. I'm trying to hold this camera on my chest to see if I can do this at the same time. punched holes that'll be a lot easier for the needle to go through they're lined up together and once it's stitched should be ready to go all right let's continue
Force of thread would get caught on the damn needle. Really? <laughs> it went right in to the safety needle. <laughs> Whatever you would call that thing. I can't believe it. And if I try to do that, it wouldn't. <laughs> Oh my god. I swear if I try to do that it wouldn't work. <laughs> I mean literally it went in like it got caught on there and I guess as I pulled it it went in through <laughs> the side piece. <laughs> Man, that's some talent. <laughs> oh. oh somebody got triggered by that comment maybe. <laughs> You know, I wake up every morning thinking, who can I trigger today? <laughs> People are just damn too sensitive these days, man. Oh, it's early in the morning, by the way. It is... Well, it's quarter to six now, but it was a lot earlier when I came in. You can you can hear it in my voice. It's still a little groggy. Haven't had coffee yet. So we're gonna do we're gonna do coffee today with Chris. And we have a special guest. Oh, I did that one wrong. I can tell you that it wrong. Or did I? Maybe not. Oh, I think I'll be all right. So we have a special guest today. A gentleman. I did it again. Oh my God, look at this. I did it again. What the heck? <laughs> all right, this is getting to be crap now. It's not time to do that. Pull the thread out every time I have to stitch back piece. Anyway, I forgot what was I saying. We have a special guest today. A gentleman by the name of Bill from District Leather. They are located in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. And he's here for a couple of days and hanging out and just hanging out. We're chit-chatting and we're kind of getting to know each other a little bit. He'll tell you guys all about himself when he when he's on the video. So we'll have that later on today. All right, I'm not going to bore you with this uh, with the stitching anymore. As you guys can see, it's coming along pretty good. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got that stitched on. Now we're simply going to stitch this back heel cap area back together and that'll cover that back seam if you see where the old stitch and the new stitch is going to be now we just alter the size of the shoe all right, let's continue. You guys notice the color of the number eight? But look at what it used to be. See that? Interesting. Maybe there's other shades like that, number eight? I think they just maybe dyed it afterwards. But if you look here, that's before the top line went in. See how light color that is? So did they do it after stitching it on to dye the uppers? Doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Oh, that, that little bump right there is... That's where the hot glue... They applied the hot glue. I guess they just put a dab in there to keep it in place while they stitch the sole. Let's continue.
You all know what time it is. It's hammer time. <laughs> oh my God, I just can't believe I did that. <laughs> you know what, sometimes you gotta laugh at yourself. We have to. Oh, this is a JR Flex that I cut from a big sheet, from a big bend. Customer requested no JR logo. So I said, okay. Whatever you want. I uh, finished the bottoms, added a little bit of dye, buffed, polished. I'm gonna do a red stitching on there. And then we're gonna continue with this job. It's getting there. All right, let's continue. Beautiful. What show is this again? Chris and Steve show? <laughs> Chris and Steve Coffee Hour. A coffee Hour at Beto's. <laughs> we have a special guest today, Mr. Bill from District Leather. How's it going? Bill, why don't you tell us about yourself and see what uh, what you do and, and how'd you end up here? Yeah, so uh, I run a business called District Leather Supply. We're based out of Atlanta. And we sell leather to crafters and small businesses and uh, anybody who will have us and um, specialize in kind of taking large quantities of stuff, including highs and sides, cut into small panels or kind of more affordable, attainable quantities. Um, started out in my basement and uh, I ended up buying a bunch of full sides just because I wanted to try a bunch of leather and spent a ton of money on it and realized there's got to be a better way to do this just to try different things. So. Uh, took off, working really well. We've been in business for almost four years now. I've got five employees in the warehouse, and uh, it's going well. Based in Atlanta? Georgia. Based in Atlanta, yeah. Cool. Nice. That's awesome. So, but I'm originally from here, and that's where the district name comes from, so it's good to be back. Cool. Welcome. Thanks. So today, we're, we're trying a new coffee out today. It is called Invader Coffee. InvaderCoffee.com, okay? This is basically the cover. Now, this is not a paid endorsement, okay? Don't tell me I sold out. I didn't. <laughs> Customers send a box of coffee, and we figured, you know what? Let's try it out and see how it is, and we'll give our opinions and whether we like it or not, whatever the case may be. Nothing against the company. It's veteran-owned. I like my coffee black, like my heart. I guess that's their, <laughs> yeah, their, their tagline. Logo? Yeah. tagline. Yeah. yeah. So... But there's not much uh, there's not much background on the uh, you know as far as coffee itself. We right. don't know what it is. We reached out to the company, but you know, I reached out a little too late. You know, so we just kind of on the spur of the moment we contact them, say, hey, what do you tell us about this coffee so we can have some talking points? But they're still sleeping. It's still okay. Sleeping. We're early birds, so we woke up a little early today. All right, so let's try it.
It's better than the other coffee. Oh we had. yeah, it's not bad. You know. Yeah. It's 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 pretty. It's not. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have that aftertaste like the other coffee. Yeah, they don't have that bad bite. That, that after yeah, it was. Bite. Um, they had mud oil. They had something mm. in the mud or something. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's like ground. I think I could like. Cool. I think I get used to this. Yeah, I think yeah. You know, not bad. It looks I smooth. I think this really is a smooth. little. Uh, maybe a little like. Not darker, but maybe a little stronger than little stronger. the original coffee that we used to have, that, that um, Brazilian uh, blend, whatever that was. That Najar, I think it's the, the right. Arabic coffee that right. we used to drink. Yeah, I figured it'd be a little stronger too, because uh, when I was making it, 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 it was dense in the... Uh... But it's a little grainy though, it's not as... I wonder if they can if they can have a, a way to make it like a powder. Like a powder. Like, literally like powder. It, it, you know, when I was looking at it, it was almost, it was, maybe it needs to be like refined when they're, when they're, mm. when they're grinding it up because the coffee we used to have, mm -hmm. we, we used to drink, it's literally like powder, dude. Yeah. You know, it's very, very, right. it's, it's, it's smooth, very smooth. Yeah, like talcum powder. Yeah. Tal very, like talcum powder. Oh, it's really, it's really, really powder. fine. It's yeah. like really fine. This yeah. one is a little bit. Slightly on the coarse side. I mean, right. it's still finely ground, but. But I wonder if that makes a difference when they're. When they're grinding into the fine powder, if it loses anything, I don't think it should. I don't know. You know, but it's not bad. It's very not it's bad. Actually, not bad. I think we get a we get a yeah, thumbs, get thumbs up. up on this one, especially veteran owned. Right, that's even better. Right, because we like that. So, Bill, you want to show off your shoes or no? What you got? No, I'll show you. So check so this out. I'm an amateur uh, cord winner. And uh, design a pattern for this. Explain to them what cord wiener is because some people don't hmm. know. So a cord wiener is a shoemaker versus a cobbler is a shoe repairer. Hmm. Um, as I recall, there were different guilds in Old England and uh, some fights going on. I'm sure you've talked about the history before. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, two very different... Uh, Shoemakers and shoe repair guys, they don't like each other. Not that, not that, not me, but per se, but just in general, hmm. in history, you know. What's interesting, one of them can do the other one's job too. <laughs> um, I can. So anyway, but yeah, uh, I make patterns and uh, made this from scratch. So cut all the leather from scratch and uh, oh, check these an colors out. One okay, look at these colors, guys. And look, it's because I have a leather supply nice. shop and I work directly with tanneries, I get custom leather made too. So 90% of the leather on there was uh, designed by yours truly. Look how the sh look how the color oh. shifts. Isn't that cool? I mean, that is the coolest of cools. So that's an elephant print, and traditionally the Nike elephant print that they use is uh, black, no, green, and gray, and so yellow, play on that. red, gold. It's fun. I mean, that's just freaking that's awesome. That's pretty cool. I love Thanks. that. That's a big foot too. It's the size of my own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see that? Yeah, I'm a 15, so yeah, my samples are a little bit. That's why we gave him the bigger cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, thanks. But, but they're not for sale, though? They are not for sale. They are not for sale. So now he's you You want to kind of basically hone in your, your you know. Craft. Your craft My craft before. and get the process. Right. Uh, Maybe in the efficient. future, because, you know, they're gonna, people are going to ask, you know, hey, man, how much is that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not really for sale at the moment, but, but you know, go follow yes. District Leather. Do you guys have a YouTube channel? We do. Uh, it's Baby. I started it last year before COVID, and then when COVID hit, we had to kind of scramble to, to make sure that we can stay afloat. So. so follow them on Instagram, Yep. and then if anybody's interested, you know, follow them on Instagram, and, and when he's ready, I'm sure he'll post it, and, and then, you know, you guys can chit-chat, Yeah. see what comes of it. And make shell quarter versions of those, too, and I'm uh, really excited about that. He made one, a shell quarter one. Beautiful. Mm. Thanks. That was really nice. All right, I think that is our show for today. Excellent. Well, thanks thank for having for, me, guys. Thank you for coming. I appreciate the coffee. This is excellent. I think uh, I think maybe we'll do this uh, routine. Uh, routine, yeah. With every video. Each shoe comes with a bag of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you act now. We have to have these companies send us coffee, though, no? Right, that's right. I mean, we got to reach out to them and say, hey, man, you know what? Coffee review hour. Co yeah, you know, Beto's coffee hour. What do we call it? We'll figure it out. Vito's Coffee Hour.
forget that. That doesn't. That doesn't. Doesn't have a bite to it. Doesn't roll off death. the tongue. Right. You know, not enough of a pattern in a rough. Yeah. Shoes we'll coffee, out. <laughs> coffee and shoes. Mm. <laughs> was that like the? What's that word? The interview. Shoes? Coffee and shoes, maybe. I don't know. No. Shoes are dirty, and then coffee oh, is yeah. coffee. You know. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with a play for coffee talk. I was gonna say, yeah, but coffee yeah. talk. Shoe talk? No. Shoe talk. Shoe talk. No, shoe talk. I mean, you know, like some, anything shoe related that rhymes with like grounds. There was a magazine that um, that our association had shoe talk. It was a little mm -hmm. like, month like quarterly magazine. I was thinking like uh, like grind and soul or soul roast or uh, I don't right. know. Mm -hmm. Soul to soul. Just grind you know, and sand. some ideas. Grind and sand. Grind and sand. Grind and sand no. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. anyway, all right. We're, that's more just, that's, and, uh, yeah, exactly. That's for the round table on our next round of call. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys again on next time. Take care. All right. All right. Welcome back. We are done with another project. I mean, if you're looking at it, you know, like this, you can't really tell that it was taken apart and put back together, which is the whole idea about restoring shoes. Put the Lulu tips on there. Red stitching as per customer's suggestion, request. The dovetail heels, brass nails. This was a $585 job. Um, these Yumas, Y-U-M-A, Florsheim Yumas were, I think introduced in 68. This particular one is from the early 90s. So I'd say these are about 30 years old. Now the older ones, well, even these are pretty sought after you know, people, people look for these. They're not available to, uh, you know, too many of them. And um, if you find one, you better grab them, especially the shell cordable ones. The older ones are, are much, much sought after than these. But again, these are not bad either. Some of them have a dark brown or burgundy, I should say, you know, top line right there. This particular one has a black one. That's how, that's how it came from the manufacturer. So, and I think these were... In 1968, when they introduced them, they were selling for $32. So I'm not sure in the 90s what they were going for, but couldn't have been too much more than maybe 100 or something. I don't know what the, what the retail price was. But now these are these are going to last many many years to come, and the best part they're going to fit the customer's feet because um, he just wanted them a little tighter than than what it was. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And thumbs up. I know I'm going to get about maybe seven or eight thumbs down with this video because there's always a group of people love to give thumbs down for whatever the reason it is, but it's okay. And uh, leave some comments if you want, share it all you want, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next project. Take care.